humans. It's been a minute since I've gotten on here to film a little video for you all. I wanted to talk about number one, where I've been, what I've been doing the month of October. Some of you know that I spent the entire month off of social media. I am prepping for a art market this coming weekend and I wanted to share with you all some new products that are coming to the shop. But that is pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. I don't have all of the products that I'm going to be launching. However, I do have most of them. So if you wanna be the first to know all of the new items coming to the shop as well as early access, I would love it if you would consider joining over on Patreon. Something really cool that Patreon has just launched recently is that you no longer have to subscribe monthly to the artists that you're interested in supporting. You now have the option to just follow along. So in my last podcast, you may have heard me talking about this. Social media platforms are now completely run by algorithms. A follow pretty much means nothing anymore. You follow who you want to follow, but you're probably never going to see their content because social media platforms are pushing their algorithms so much that you don't even see who you're choosing to follow. Therefore, it causes specifically small businesses and other content creators to basically lose touch with their community. And Patreon is seeing this issue and they have brought so many changes to now where you can just follow along. And so whatever content your creator puts as public, you're able to view or you have the option of subscribing monthly to their Patreon by whatever tier best fits you. So yeah, like I said, if you want to be the first to know, if you want early access to the shop drops and all those fun little things, go head over to my Patreon and consider that are either partnering or just following along over there. I definitely have been prioritizing my Patreon a lot more than any other platform for the simple fact that I'm able to have a more intimate connection with my community. And for those of you that are a part of the community, it's bringing your experience to be a part of a creative's community to the next level. So enough about my Patreon plug, let's get into today's topic. I also redid a little bit of my office. I want to do an office tour soon. So the first thing I want to go over is the new items coming in the shop. Now I wanted to create products that were they felt a little bit more authentic to who I am. And I think for a while I have been almost like neglecting the things that I've always loved. And when I was little, I used to have my room decorated with butterflies and I used to talk to trees during my snack time with my little fruit snacks. I would just sit at the window and I would talk to trees. And there was something about being out in nature that for some reason really connected me and grounded me even as a really young kid. Of course, I didn't know how to put words to it or really explain the connection Connection. I just knew that I love nature and I love being outside and I love butterflies and all those different types of things and growing up I think I got away from a lot of the things that really made me feel grounded and whole and I started just going with the flow of society and started following the path of things that I should be doing rather than what I actually want to be doing. And my lesson actually this week, I'm in week six of the artist way, six out of 12. It's a 12 week little, I guess, program, not program, but you know, workbook. And something it was saying in there is that what you want to do is what you are meant to do. And so often we just kind of go with what we should be doing, but whose standard is that? And where did that come from? So of course, like I said, I'm gonna talk about the artist way in a little bit, but all of these creations basically are coming from the pieces of me that I started to pick back up during this entire month without social media. I had no distractions and it was just me, myself, and I, and of course the creator. And I just started making things that made me happy, that made me feel good. Also, this video might be a long one, so I encourage you to grab your favorite beverage. I have been drinking the stock cold brew, the red bottle. I can't remember the name of it, but mm. So good. Anyways, brief coffee pause. <laughs> the first thing that I want to show you all is some of you might be familiar with my wellness shots. What these basically are is truths and affirmations about whatever the topic is. So I have mindfulness wellness shots and healing wellness shots and basically think of a wellness shot. You know, those little like bottles filled with like turmeric ginger, like little immunity shots basically. So imagine that but for your mind. So they're called mental wellness shots. But I created a new flavor, so to say, and it's overthinking. I think this one's by far my favorite because if you're anything like me, you tend to overthink everything. It's like you're going to sleep and just you start replaying scenarios in your head or you constantly think what if or sometimes you even plan for the worst. 
so that you're not surprised. But these are to help you in your journey of breaking this habit. So the mindfulness wellness shot is all geared towards if you want to become more mindful. The healing wellness shot is to help aid you in your healing journey. And the overthinking wellness shot is to help aid you in breaking the pattern of overthinking. So I'm going to pull one just for an example so you can kind of see what you would get. So this one says, I give myself permission to rest and be still. I'll pull one more just so you can get a little gist of it. I am exactly where I'm supposed to be at the exact right time. So they're just these little affirmations and truths about overthinking to help you break the habit of it. The next thing that I got into is punch needling. I've seen a lot of punch needling going around and I just thought maybe I'd give it a try. I thought maybe I'd like it. And... To my surprise, it's actually one of my most favorite mindless art mediums to work with, like the fabric art or the fiber art, I think is what it's called. But for the simple fact that it's a really repetitive pattern, I guess you can say, so I can just sit there with a show on or watching other YouTube videos and just punch away and I'm just punching little holes and it's forming a design. And so I noticed that it's a really nice mindless creative venture to or hobby to pick up because I don't have to think so strategically. So when I'm painting or when I'm drawing, it's like I've got to think about what I'm creating as it's coming up. Where this, it's like the design is already there and I'm really just punching it into place. So I am creating, of course, I still have to get rid of the little like monk's cloth that I punch needle it on. I'm going to be putting backing on these, but I'm making these little mug rugs and I'll do, of course, a little close up shot here of them. But yeah. I have been absolutely loving punch needling. Like I said, it's a very mindless hobby that I got to pick up and it's just easy and simple. As some of you know, I have also been really into block printing. So you basically hand carve these blocks out, which are, you basically hand carve a stamp for yourself and it's on this like blank pad and you just hand carve out your design. So I'll do a little close up of a couple of these that I've done. But yeah, you basically just hand carve out whatever design that you're wanting and you take this block printing ink and a roller over your stencil, so over your stamp that you've carved out and then you block print it onto a piece of paper. So this one is called the phases of the moon and it's basically saying, I have meanings on the back of all of them and if you watch my latest podcast, I actually did it on the meaning behind this print but a little bit more in depth. I'm just gonna share on the back what it is. The moon doesn't actually change in shape when it goes through phases, rather our perspective of it does. Sometimes we see a sliver, other times we see a half sphere, then a full moon in different phases in between. But this doesn't mean it's not always the full moon. We are always unique individuals. It's impossible to lose who we are completely, but with the seasons of life come with different perspectives and different versions of ourselves. May this print remind you that you will always be uniquely you, but also give yourself permission to see differently and to be seen differently. The next one I did is this print of wildflowers and the meaning behind it says, may these wildflowers remind you of yourself when you look at them. May you see beauty and resilience. May they remind you to be gentle on yourself and others. May you be reminded that we are all wildflowers, unique and individualistic, and all of us are worthy of love. I also hand carved and block printed a couple of holiday cards. So I wanted to go with like a Christmassy like holiday theme. So I did this olive branch for peace and I'll do some close up shots here as well in a second. And this one is joy. And then the last one that I did is like this little barn and it's hope. So it's kind of like the barn that like baby Jesus was born in and all of that stuff. I definitely wanted things to be a little bit more handmade, but I really enjoyed the process of this. And I'm gonna talk about this later, but I really learned how to gain a lot more patience being off of social media for the last month. I was able to master the art of being present so well that it directly affected my art. And I actually feel like I have time to spend on art. I think I was in this like rush, rush, rush mode because of you know the hustle and bustle of life and being on social media and comparing myself and all these different like traps that I felt like I was in where I had nothing else to do but to just think for myself and live in each and every moment. And it made me directly prioritize taking more time on my creations. The next thing that I created is these little standing frames and it's like framed greenery. So of course I'll do another close up, but these are basically just ways to, they are 
hand dried and pressed greenery from the outdoors and it's basically a way to bring the outdoors into your office space or into your home wherever you want to place them and like I said for me the outdoors really grounds me in a way that I can't necessarily put words to it's just being surrounded by other living things for some reason just reminds me of how alive I am and how temporary this life is and I don't know it just grounds me in a really weird way so I wanted to give the opportunity for other people who may not be able to step outside all the time or work in office spaces to bring some greenery to them without having to take care of a plant or anything like that. The next thing I did is this print here. I will do a close-up little shot of it and it is by far my favorite print I think I've ever done in my entire life. So the meaning behind this print, we're always going to be in the state of becoming. We're never going to be at a state of we've arrived. We're never going to be the full version of ourselves until the day that we take our last breath. So my point in this is to remind us that we are all trying our best to navigate the human experience. We are all in a state of becoming constantly. And I think it's just a reminder to be gentle on ourselves and to be gentle on others, to give space and room and permission to change your mind upon learning new information. We're all in a state of becoming. None of us have it all figured out. And I think it just gives us a little bit more space to love each other for where we're at and not for what we expect of each other. We're all on this journey of finding our footprint in the map of life. And I think it's important to give each other the space to do so. So that's the heart behind that. I have a little bit more personal meaning for myself behind it. So that is all of the new items that I have for you all. I feel like it's getting kind of dark. It is literally only five, but it gets dark so fast. So I'm going to turn another light on and then finish filming the artist way portion of this video. Okay, I'm not sure if that light helped too much, but I think we'll all be fine. So I have been doing the artist way. I am currently on week six. It is Monday, so I just finished my reading for this coming week and I have to start all of my tasks for the week. So I am halfway done with it and I truly don't know what I'm gonna do when I finish it because this book has honestly completely changed my life. And as crazy as this might sound to some people, I think that this book is actually helping me better understand the creator more than the Bible. And I feel like that's gonna rub a lot of people wrong because I'm not saying that the Bible isn't alive and active and transformative, but I am saying that because I've only been viewing things through a very religious lens, the Bible has actually almost triggered me and just for lack of better terms, I'm just speaking freely. I'm hoping that this helps someone, me being this honest, but I know that it's also going to cause some people to probably judge me, but I think the Bible was triggering me. I've been having a lot of like religious beliefs and so I was reading the Bible still with the same lens and the same context as I was before, which again was very religious. So I felt like I wasn't able to see it for how God meant it. And of course I have my own questions and my own things that I'm working through in my own personal life that I keep between me and the creator himself. I saw God as this very strict parental figure with a lot of rules and as much as I denied that. I started coming to terms with how I really did see God because though I've been through a couple of things with, you know, church hurt or whatever you want to call it, it's just humans. But going through that, I realized once I got all of my unforgiveness all sorted out or all of that stuff and I got all the humans out of the way, my real problem lied with God himself. My beef was with God. Feeling like he says he'll never leave me nor forsake me, but I felt very abandoned. Apparently, isolation is where the enemy gets you, but isolation is where I found him again. So there's just been a lot of different things that I have been taught, that I learned, that I believed, that just don't make sense to me anymore. And one of the things I'm working on is God himself. It's not in a box because you can't put the creator in a box. And I think that's what I did for a very long time. I saw him as this little thing that I had to get done and things I had to do, certain things I had to believe. Instead of seeing it so much more deeper and so much more open and very, very intimate and personal. So there's definitely going to be things that I'm not going to fully explain number one because that's my personal relationship with the creator and it's 
going to be different for every single person. That's why it's personal. And then number two, I don't want to go too in depth with the artist way. Number one, because I haven't finished it. And then number two, I don't want it to take away from your authentic experience because it has to be authentic, not someone else's perspective of the book. It definitely needs to be between you, the creator, and the book. So holiday gifts, highly recommend. But regardless, I spent the last month and kind of in isolation. I really didn't talk to anyone. I pretty much was just by myself, really seeking out my soul, trying to figure out who I am, what I'm meant to do on this earth. And I didn't think that I was going to figure it out in a month and I still have it, don't have it figured out. But I at least wanted to start the journey because it's something that I had been putting off for a while is facing my questions and facing my existential crisis, for lack of better terms. <laughs> and what I have found is that my creative self and my spiritual self are one and the same. And because the creator created me to create, creating itself is spiritual it is an act of spirituality like when you're creating you're having a spirit it's a spiritual experience and i never saw it that way in fact i actually think a lot of my creative block was because of religion and i never ever ever admitted to myself that i was religious or that i saw god as more of a religion than a relationship because i always said that you know it's a relationship, not a religion, but I 100% was very much more religious than I was in relationship with the creator himself. But yeah, I started seeing that all of my religious views and the things that I believed, the systems that I was a part of, the things that had been spoken over me really caused a huge creative block and I chose to stay in that place because I started to believe as much as I loved creating as much as I saw myself as an artist etc and every single one of us are is a creative and is an artist in their own way like for example my brother is an engineer my dad's an engineer he's a VP of construction my husband is going into the field of construction under my dad with a project management they're in like all this like science and numbers and math their minds are so beyond creative. The things that they can create, how my brother can make buildings and understand how things work and go together, that is extremely creative. I just happen to be the creative on the more typical side, you know, with the painting and the art and the what most people consider to be creative. But in general, all of us are creatives. Every single one of us is an artist in our own way. And every single time we create something, we are encountering a spiritual experience and doing what we're meant to do as humans. Now, a lot of times what happens is we find socially acceptable ways to express ourselves and nine times out of 10, that means a part of a system. You know, we pick the nine to five and do art on the side as a hobby or whatever it may be. But regardless, this is my first time really acknowledging and seeing that my creative self and my spiritual self are the exact same thing. I always saw them separately. And this book has really helped me identify and define that and go deeper with myself and this book is definitely having a moment on social media i'm seeing so many artists doing it and i've had this book on my shelf for i don't know maybe like six months now and as soon as i saw everyone doing it i was like i gotta jump on this wave like it is just changing so many people's lives and i get the hype i am a part of the hype i'm here for the hype sorry i had to put on another light because it is just getting dark by the second <laughs> but yeah so like i said i'm here for the hype but another practice that is in here that if you do it you will start to understand is i've wanted to do journaling for a while i used to journal all the time i just got out of the habit then i journaled on the computer because every time i would write my hand would hurt yada 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 excuses 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 so this book talks about the morning pages and it's basically just writing three pages every single day of just your stream of consciousness so whatever comes out whatever is on your mind and typically people do it in the morning because it kind of gets all the distractions and all the things that you're thinking about out of the way so that you can go about your day but the whole point of morning pages is to not put them in a box and to not let your inner critic take over it's something to be very open-minded about there's no right way to do them and it has really helped me get out of the box and stop judging myself. I think I've become 
a lot more gentle on myself and others and that's touched on in week five about how the evidence of the morning pages and I never related more you don't know what's happening to you until the book starts addressing it and defining literally what you're going through like it works and they've also made me wildly present in a way that is almost unexplainable I've always struggled with living in the past and fearing the past will be in my future or fearing you know, what's happened will happen again and living in that constant fear of the past. And then on the contrary, I struggle with planning for the future so much so that I lose track of where I'm at right now and nine times out of 10 plan for the worst because I'd rather plan for the worst and then be surprised if it's good rather than the flip side where I just kind of think the best and optimistically and then the worst happens and then I'm surprised and caught. So I've struggled a lot with those things and number one I think pairing you know not being on social media along with the morning pages is something that has really really helped me be so insanely present that I'm experiencing each moment. I'm here. I'm now. I've never felt more alive in my life. I've never felt more connected, even though I thought being off of social media would disconnect me from society. I actually see it flip now. I realize how disconnected the world is because of social media. And I'm really trying to find a balance because I really see social media as a false reality completely, like entirely. And I'm trying to find the balance of going back to social media when it doesn't really line up with my values anymore. But I know there's a balance because of, you know, small business stuff. And for example, things like this, I love sharing what's helping me in hopes that it'll help one person. But yeah, so I really learned how to be extremely present. And I, like I said, I'm really trying to find that balance with going back to social media when it just... Everything looks so weird to me now. Even like trends on TikTok and things like that. Like it just, I don't know how else to explain it other than it just doesn't make any sense to me anymore. I think not necessarily morning pages, but just learning how to be present has kind of helped me see what reality really is and what I have right in front of me and how much I don't want to take advantage of this very, very temporary life. Or I guess I want to take advantage in all of the good ways, but I don't want to just let life happen to me. And all I've been doing is letting life happen to me. At the same time, it's helping me balance letting go of control and allowing divine intervention into my life and synchronicity and all these different types of things that are taught in the book. And of course, those are things I don't want to go into too much detail because it'll take away from your experience because my mind has been blown between these pages and my relationship with the creator in my own time during my morning pages. But the other thing that you are assigned to do in this book is artist dates. And I hate to admit this, but it has been five weeks now and I have not done a single artist date. I went to Hobby Lobby one time because number one, I had to. So I figured I would say it's an artist date and I would just go. And then I ended up picking out things for me and I didn't even get anything for my artist. And if you go through the book, you'll understand what I mean by my artist but yeah so I hate to admit it I don't want to count it because I don't think it does count and I have not done basically a single artist date and I'm not too happy about that so this week it's Monday it's a fresh start of the week I'm halfway through I think I can set aside some time to go on a date with my little artist and that's another thing too I'm just being gentle on myself and I'm giving myself room to kind of fail in a way and make a mistake but I'm growing and I'm learning and I think that's what's most important so that is that book that's where I've been that's what's up I it was very last minute but it was very necessary for the state that I was in it all came to a crashing at one night where I just literally was like I don't recognize myself I don't know what my purpose is. I don't understand anything that's going on around me. And all the things that I had been feeling for the last couple of years came to a head and I just had to face them. But regardless, I still am struggling with a lot of different questions and doubts and so many different things, but I'm not seeing them as this like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know who I am and my world's falling apart and my world's crumbling. And the book actually went into talking about this, your inner self as terra incognita which basically means undiscovered unexplored and unknown territory so it talks about how 
actually, the more you see your inner self as unexplored and unknown is actually better. And I think it makes you more human when you start to focus so much inwardly. And it's basically talking about this unknown territory and this land on the inside of you might actually be your promised land for you specifically because you're an individual and no one else can provide that promised land but you and what's within you. So super life transformative, seeing these different concepts, things that I saw is negative, like not knowing who I am or what I'm doing, is actually now a positive sign. It makes me see that I'm growing and that I'm changing and that I'm evolving and that I'm finding more and more pieces of this promised land from within. And my expectations of the world is lowering because I'm finding all of these things from within me. That, I think, ends my rant for now. Of course, I'm only halfway done with the book, so I definitely want to do a full review once I'm finished and a full little check-in of where I'm at and what I'm doing from then on. But for now, I wanted to hop on here and just say hi. It's been a minute. I am realizing how dark it is getting, so I definitely need to turn this video off. But yeah, that's really all I have for you all. I know this was kind of a chunky video. This is a big one, but I just wanted to fit all of these into one because I felt like doing little individual videos might not make sense because I think everything is connected into where I'm at and what I'm doing now. And I just wanted to combine them because yeah, they're all connected. They're all pieces of making all of this make sense. But anywho... I hope you have a great rest of your night, evening, day, morning, whatever time it is that you're watching this. Maybe it's in the middle of the night. I hope you're doing well, genuinely. I really, really hope you're doing well. This world is very, very beautiful, but in a lot of ways it's toxic. And I think we have to learn how to see the good and be present, focus on these present moments and take advantage of what's right in front of us before it's gone. So I want to encourage you to do that. We are on this journey together. And that is all I have for you all. With that being said, I have my art market this weekend. Again, if you want to have the first look at all of things new, as well as early access to this new drop, please head over to my Patreon. I would love it if you would join the family, whether it's a follow, whether you partner monthly, whatever it is, I'm forever grateful for you. Also, shout out to my patrons. Love you all so much. Thank you for your faithful consistency. And yeah, like I said, that's all I have. I will see you all in the next one.